It's no secret that I love the entire Resident Evil franchise. Although I haven't played every game in the series, I have enjoyed almost every game that I've touched. And yes, that even includes the subpar 6, to an extent at least. It may have been a flawed game, but there were elements that I did enjoy, such as the different moves you can perform while aiming to evade attacks. But out of all of the old school RE games, 2 stands as my favorite, and I could even contemplate calling it the best game on the PS1. Is that a stretch? Maybe. But it's just such a great game with the light puzzles, gory for its time visuals, and solid gameplay. So enter Resident Evil 2 on modern consoles, also known as Resident Evil 2 Remake. It's a completely redone version of the classic game, with enough similar to the original game to show its roots, and enough changes to make veterans see some new stuff. First off, the story. You choose between one of two characters, Leon Kennedy, a Raccoon City police officer on his first day of duty, or Claire Redfield, a young woman entering the city looking for her brother. Both of them meet up outside of a gas station, where Leon first encounters some of the walking dead inside. They travel to the police precinct, where they are split up. Each one now has their ways of which to contend with the horrors inside and find their ways to safety. Possibly the biggest change from the original game to the remake is the gameplay moving from the static rooms and tank controls to a more fluid third person shooter. No longer is the camera set in firm locations where you have to move from screen to screen not exactly sure what's going to be lurking on the next area. Instead, you move between each room without any breaks, able to swing the camera towards any location. You might think that this might eliminate some of the stress and tension from the game, but that's not the case due to the excellent lighting effects that the game boasts. Due to power outages, the police station is, for the most part, dark and devoid of any signs of life. Random noises can be heard around corners and from other rooms. Windows will shatter, lights will swing, and zombies will, of course, lurk in dark zones. Being that this is a Resident Evil game, there are plenty of the undead running around, and you'll need to take them down. Weapons are limited to your starting handgun, and you can find a shotgun, grenade launcher, flamethrower, magnum, and so on. Most zombies will require multiple hits to take down permanently. If you aim for the head consistently, like I tried to do, it will still normally take about 3 or 4 bullets to drop them, and even then, they might not be dead. After a few minutes, the zombie may decide to get back up for another attempt at a snack. Ammo is also in short supply, and because of this, you'll be able to utilize a knife to defend yourself. Unlike in other games, where the knife is eternally sharp, in this one, the knife can break after using it. Each knife has a gauge under it that shows you its condition. However, it's still wise to carry them with you. Not only can you finish off enemies on the ground once you shoot them down, you can also hit L1 when attacked from the front for your character to stab the enemy and push it away. Of course, you'll temporarily lose the weapon until you run over to the enemy and pluck it out of their chest. In addition to the standard ammo, you can also find gunpowder laying around. By combining different varieties of the gunpowder, you'll create different types of ammo. For example, two standard gunpowders will get you handgun ammo. Yellow gunpowder and regular gunpowder will get you shotgun shells. The gunpowder descriptions tell you what you can make, and I found it best to save it until you need it. In addition to the standard zombies, you'll of course run into other mutated freaks that want you dead. Returning are the devastating lickers, lizard-like beasts that have a lengthy tongue to pierce bodies. They are just as damaging, but this time around have a new quirk. They are blind. They only react to sounds, so it is possible to slowly sneak beyond the liquor's range to move harmlessly past it. I wouldn't really recommend this tactic, but it's a possibility if you're low on ammo. You also have Mr. X. He's a returning threat from the original game, but he is even more of a problem now. That's because he will constantly follow you throughout the entire police precinct. This happens after certain events occur, and will stop after another event happens. Mr. X will, like the Lickers, react on sound and will track you throughout the building. What's scarier is that you can hear his heavy footsteps coming for you. You might think that this is a neat idea to build tension, and it is. However, I personally found Mr. X to be somewhat frustrating to navigate around. Because of him constantly hunting you down, it slows down the pace of the game unless you decide to keep running around and ignoring the chance that he can figure out where you're at. Otherwise, you have to slowly walk to where you want to be, and still run the threat of giving away your position when shooting at a zombie you might have missed. 
Once you get out of the precinct and jump into the sewers, the pacing goes back to normal, but I could have done without Mr. X in this way. He was sort of annoying in the original game, but he's even more annoying now. Oh, and the sewers? The sewers, along with the lab, have been expanded significantly. In a PS1 game, the sewers and the lab could be cleared in about a half an hour each, with the majority of the game taking place in the precinct. The remake still primarily takes place in the police precinct, but when you do reach the sewers, you'll find that you need to do a lot more down here. It's in here where you see that the story of Umbrella, Raccoon City, and the G-Virus have been updated and lengthened. The sewer isn't just a quick stop on the way to the lab. You'll run into not just zombies, but massive creatures that regurgitate things that can poison you, along with wielding massive arms that will sweep you off of your feet. The Umbrella Lab has also been updated. Areas have been enlarged, you get a bigger glance at what the lab was working on, and in addition, the plant enemies that have existed in the original have been modified into creatures that have pus-filled sacks that need to be blasted to kill the creature. Or, you know, fire works well too. So enough of the areas that you'll be fighting for your life in. With the upgrade in consoles, you'll see that the visuals of the game are much, much gorier. Right from the start of the game, you'll see a piece of neck meat getting eaten, a dark room full of blood and bodies, and a police officer getting ripped in half. Bullets have a chance of bursting skulls, like a critical hit, and it's a good way to guarantee that the zombie is completely dead. You can shoot or stab at limbs, severing them. Bodies will retain slash marks and bullet holes. There are such simple details but go a long way in order to establish the mood of the game. And yes, there are jump scares at Resident Evil 2 attempts. Zombies will burst through windows, liquors will come in through the sunroof, Mr. X enjoys bursting through walls, in addition to the jump scares, there are some funny moments as well, some of them even intentional. You can trap enemies behind doors and play peekaboo while blasting them. You'll find a zombie wanting a donut. And there is this part where a zombie falls over a banister and tumbled multiple floors to the ground. No matter how many times I've seen that, I laugh every time. Another thing to note is that the map is a lot more useful this time around. It wasn't terrible in the original, but here, it gives you a much better idea of where you're at and what you might have missed in each room. Items are marked, places of interest are shown with an exclamation mark, and the color of the room changes from red to blue once it is fully explored and cleared out. It is a nice feature that can be used to narrow down where you've been and where you need to go. Is there any negative with Resident Evil 2? Other than Mr. X being a pain in the ass, not really. It's the way a remake should be done. Capcom did enough to take the original game, place it in the remake, but then build upon it to make it something fantastic for fans new and old. There were plenty of times while playing that I recognized the area, but then shortly after thought, huh, this wasn't in the original game. I was enthralled by the game from start to finish, wanting to know what I was going to encounter next. I cannot recommend Resident Evil 2 enough. As much as I really, really enjoyed the original game on the PS1, I think I still prefer it due to nostalgia's sake, this game is a very, very close second. Again, the fantastically gory visuals, the ever-present threat of the undead, and the dwindling ammo supplies come together and make an amazing package. If you are a fan of survival horror games, this is one that needs to be added to your collection. Final score? 7 out of 7. This is Reaper. Happy fragging.